G'day folks. Well, it's equipment autopsy time again. <laughs> On a bit of a roll the last couple of weeks. Now we have a three kilowatt uh, pure sine wave generator to autopsy. <laughs> uh, it's a Chinese thing. Nothing too special. Um, it's not cranking and the starter motor pulls a ton of amps like this engine seized and I haven't been able to turn it over from the other end either. There's a fly, there's a fan in there. I can sort of turn it a little bit but it's really stiff. It's like a bearing or something's gone. Uh, that's all muffling, noise, suppression for exhaust. Still got three quarters of a tank of fuel in it too so I'm going to drain that next. Take the fuel line off. That's air intake box. Pull cord's been ripped off it. I've tried to pull it over and rip the end of the um, rip cord off. Control gear, you can sort of make out some of the markings on it, but there isn't a lot. Yeah, remote control, that's what that is. Antenna, so you got a remote start, remote stop. Um, economy switch. Yeah, you can sort of make out the, the markings on it, but there's not a lot left. It's got overload, um, pilot and oil level warning LEDs. Yeah, not too bad. Got grounding. Funny thing is grounding goes to the plate, but that plate doesn't attach to anything metal. <laughs> so they're grounding the outlets, but they're not grounding the rest of the unit. Yeah, there's no other ground wire. Oh, that's wonderful that's all plastic that screws into there so this plates grounded but that steel covers not or nor the base or the bottom of the inverter good job China I don't see any other ground wires there they're all uh, mains AC or control DC no sorry that's DC for the charging port that's AC <laughs> it's got 12 volt output as well interesting but yeah, it's just a probably a 12 horsepower Honda uh, GX340 clone or 360 clone. It's had rats in it too. The, this whole thing was full of nibbled foam when I first looked at it. Originally, the guy at the yard wanted me to clean it up for them to sell, but I just told him it's not worth it, and he just said, "Yeah, take it for 10 bucks." <laughs> so I got a parts unit for 10 bucks. Uh, yeah, not much more to it than that. Loads of nibbled foam and dirt and crap. Yeah, I had these leads smoking when I was trying to start it out, trying to get it to turn over, so something's horribly wrong. Well, definitely bad fuel in it, not to mention the sediment. It's so bad it's blocked up the fuel valve and actually rusted it. It's had water and shit get through. So, just slowly draining that out. I think the hose itself's getting blocked. That's better. <laughs> Unfortunately, the tank's mostly full. So there's probably about four litres in there. I'll just fill up bottles and take them for disposal. Or use it for starting bonfires. <laughs> Ugh, yuck. Rat chewed foam. Oh, yeah, it's made a little nest down there under the inverter. Wouldn't surprise me if I find a dead one in here. Yeah, it's amazing how much plastic is in these things. All this cowling and everything's plastic. Uh, metal tank, top plastic cover, plastic ends, plastic fan cover for the engine. The pull start is metal, but the rest isn't. It'd be good to find a flood damage total write off and actually do a flammability test full tank of fuel and just simulate a fuel fire in here and see how well it burns. You'd hope they put fire retardant in the plastic so at least it can't sustain a fire, but I doubt it. That's all plastic. That's all plastic. <laughs> Nasty. Okay, I've got the fuel tank off. That's an item worth keeping. Um, seems like the uh, generator's in there. 
hence the big plastic cowling and everything. Yeah, it's a specially built Honda engine. It's not actually a uh, stock standard GX frame. So there's the starter motor and a lot of debris. Looks like a mouse's tail. Something bad's happened in there. <laughs> Yuck. There's fur. There's no dead mice though. Oh, well. I'll try and clean all this out without setting fire to things because I just drained about eight litres of fuel out of it. Some of which went in the bottom there and onto the ground. So, yeah, nasty. Yuck. Mouse crap. I think we'll get the air vacuum for this. Well, I figured I'd just blow all the crap off it instead of uh, wasting time with a vacuum. Works just as well. And I noticed a uh, fur-covered skeletal mouse leg came flying out, and sure enough, it's part of the one that's baked under the muffler there. Yuck. <laughs> Evil. He's pretty dead. I don't think he's moving again. Yeah, there's a leg or something or an ear. Oh well, that mousey came to a bad end. It's governor, or well, actually it's de-governed. It must be electronically governed using these servo boaters and things. There's a solenoid on the bottom of the fuel bowl. There's a servo or stepping motor up the top here and a vacuum governor or something. Yeah, it's a vacuum. Interesting way of doing it. The main thing I want to do is find out if I can even turn this thing over. Okay, well, to conclude on this for now, I'd say it's not so much the generator that's the problem, it's the inverter. Uh, the reason it wasn't cranking properly was because it's just cogging. It's trying to turn over under maximum generator load, also known as a short circuit condition. So if I plug the generator back in to the inverter and try this, that's all we get. Like it's turning over, but only just. And it's making my wire very, very hot. So, we unplug the generator. And it turns over. Hmm. I think this shoddily built inverter is short. And it looks really shoddy. The transformer down there is all cockeyed and they've just potted it in resin. Same with that capacitor, it's just sort of floating on top. Yeah, it's a bit a little bit nasty. Uh, I guess I better pull it out, not that it's really much point. I'm gonna yeah, I'll part this thing out. There's a starter motor main connection floating around. Wonderful. Yeah, this thing's junk. Not really worth anything other than parts. Well, after all that, I guess we should at least see if it's going to fire up. Put the spark plug back in. Not easy on these ones. The best thing is to break it free and then get a bit of rubber hose and stuff it over the end and spin it out. Otherwise you'll never get the damn thing out of there. Starting gear, well, I'm going to bypass that. There's a solenoid on the carburetor, so I don't even know if it's going to get fuel. That's for controlling it too. it would be throttle control. Hmm. This might work or it might go horribly wrong. Well, that was rather interesting. It works quite well. Very well, in fact. Um, yeah, it's a shame about that inverter, because otherwise it would work. But something along here, from here onwards, is short. As soon as I plug that in, we get no go. Ah, oh, well, I'll have a look at this thing later. Got a few other dot few other jobs to do tonight.